Hawk Tua. Spit on that thing. Listen, uh, I've been away for a minute because I've been trying to study the, the phenomenon known as the Hawk Tua girl. And I come up with three reasons for why Hawk Tua is like this national phenomenon, why we all can't stop saying Hawk Tua. And it's really not that uh, advanced or even like intricate when you really stop and think about because you got to really look at America. So we had the 4th of July pass by, and a lot of you guys had a chance to sit back and uphold America in all its glory. And during that time period, I got a chance to sit back and study. And what I was able to find out is what Americans love more than anything. What Americans love more than anything. And this is why Hawk to a Girl is absolutely famous and why she's blown off the internet. It's not nothing to do with sexuality. It has nothing to do with uh, deviancy. It has nothing to do with her being a white blonde girl. It has nothing to do with none of that. It could have been anybody. It could have been an Indian girl from South America. It makes no difference. What we love in America is, and what she represents, is the common person. That you, you watching this video, TV right now, you watching this video, you too can also become famous for one thing that didn't take a whole lot of talent or expertise or practice or skill to make you famous. Like, when we really sit down and break down the hawk to a girl, she is really famous for no other reason other than she just said hawk to a spit on that thing. With like a country accent. Like she would have said it like in a New York accent, probably would not have been as funny. She would have said a California accent, probably would not have been as funny either. But she did it on the streets of Nashville with her girlfriend, semi drunk, and just said hawk to a spin on a thing. And why we as a people love this is because we all wish to become famous and to become viral based on something that really doesn't have any bearing or reality in nature that helps people. It was just a moment. And that's what everybody in America, everybody wants their five minutes of fame. That's all what all people do. When you look at the whole internet, for the most part, 99% of the shit that you see on the internet is people trying to go viral for their one minute of fame. Or really now it's more like 15 seconds of fame. Because it used to be five minutes of fame back in the day when they had movies and other shit. But now it's like you want your 10 seconds of fame. And she was able to capture that with those famous words, Haktua. And why I think a lot of people relate to it. Why I think most men kind of relate to it because, I mean, it's just funny. Like it, it's not funny like in a like if anybody else says it, but it's funny just because of the the whole scenery. This guy, like, if you go back and watch the interview, the interview is fucking retarded. The interview has no like it, it, the guy interview was terrible, and his channel probably didn't even blow up. He got one little view from that. People looked the rest of his content and this shit sucked. So he was doing a terrible job interviewing, and it almost looked like he was pestering her. And in the midst of that boring ass interview, she dropped that line. And upon dropping that line, what we felt was the magic was a girl who was just uh, not trying to sell something. Just a drunk girl acting like a drunk girl, not trying to be famous, no only fans, no social media. And you can really tell because she's from a small ass city, a small ass like little town. I forgot what the town. She got a documentary now, which is even more amazing. It's like all the things we can put out documentaries for. Hawk Two got a documentary, but lo and behold, this is America. But what was so uh, riveting about it, <laughs> I keep saying riveting, but what was so interesting is that she was like this unknown person. And she didn't have an OF. She wasn't like a, a movie star. She wasn't anybody trying to become famous for being sexual or anything like that. It was just a drunk girl having a real natural moment, expressing what most women act like when they're drunk and alone. And we just happened to have a camera. And that was what, like, the bigger play. That was the larger uh, thing as like, where most people found out. Like, there was no alternative, uh, like, motive. She was just there just experiencing life and just said that funny shit, not ever thinking it was going to be a viral big hit. She wasn't trying to go viral. She just saw a microphone and said, hock to a spin on that thing. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> it's so stupid because this is, like, the biggest play in uh, America right now. It's the biggest thing going on. And... When I was watching her documentary, like, she works at a spring factory. You got people making up lies and all types of rumors and growing her mythology. And I think that's what we kind of enjoyed about it because it was an unknown person. And I think there's something to be said about, like, the unknown challenger that comes into the, the, the fray of life. When you don't know anything about somebody, everything's a mystery, everything's great, everything's grand. And we want to know more and more and more. And it draws in more people to want to come and listen. It's like, for example, we have this person who comes out of nowhere and breaks the world record for the uh, the, the world sprint. 
that person be relatively famous all over the place. Like, nobody really cares about Usain Bolt. Like, uh, don't get me wrong, Usain Bolt is still a known face. People are like, oh, yeah, he's the guy that does the thing. But for the most part, we expect greatness from Usain Bolt, so we don't really – it's like whatever. He, he's fast. We know he's fast. But with Haktua, she's not a porn star. She's not an OF girl. She's not on Twitter. She's not on any of these things. She just got on the website now started social media. She had a Snapchat but what we learned is that, like, she's just living life, and that's something that she's, like, she's not trying to make it as somebody. That's just something that happens in her personal experience, and she threw it out there. And that comes, like, to my second thing is, like, the bar for internet content, internet entertainment is so low. It is so low. As a person who makes YouTube videos, and I don't do it as uh, frequently as I should, but as a person who makes YouTube videos, one of the things I've been able to discover is that, if your content is original and somewhat relatable to the every person's experience, you will grow a lot steadier as opposed to the person trying to capture light in a bottle. So you can be like the Tates, you can be like the Amani Herzog, you can be like the all these other different people. If you try to capture, like be this big ass, like psh, flash in the pan, that's what you will be, a flash in the pan because there's so many of those people all over the place. What really blows up and captures people's imaginations in the internet webs or in the video realm of like the interwebs is relatability, character, and just being like a, a person, just being an original person. Because everybody's a remake of everybody. When you even when you look at like the streaming thing, Kai Cient, Duke Dennis, uh, Aiden Ross, they're all basically the same guy. They are essentially all the same person. This is not like a bad thing, but it's just like they literally are all the same human being. They all sit there and they stream all day long and they make the same videos on the same things and they do the same wild things. And there's nothing truly entertaining. They're, they're interchangeable mediocrities. There's very few people out there that actually capture your imagination, capture your attention because they're telling you something that's engaging your mind and having you think in a higher level. And that's what we started to realize. Now, Haktu is not anything like that. Like, she don't get me wrong. She's not like a philosopher or anything like that. But the reason she blew up so much, as opposed to all the OF girls who do, like, nasty things, they all do, it's an alternative motive. They're not there just being relatable, being a person. They're there on an agenda, which is, I want to get you to go watch my OnlyFans and pay me $15 a month. She was just on there just kicking it, having a good time, just chilling. And that's why she blew up. And it brings down to my, like, my, my second point, or the, the third point I would say is like it's the no alternative agenda. People can read when you have an alternative agenda when you're putting out things on the internet. Like I think most people think a lot of people are stupid, which most people are stupid. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of dumb dumbs, a lot, a lot of dumb dumbs. But when you're speaking simply from the heart, you're speaking as a person who just simply sees things out there and you comment on what you think and what you see and what you perceive, and you tell like kind of like your truth and you don't try to become a character that you're not. It's it, it resonates with people. Like the hock to spin on thing. Every guy got a girl that they want to hock to spin on their thing. Which is funny to guys. I bet there's some women that fucking hate on her. Because they're like, why is she so funny? Why is everybody liking her stuff? That's gross, degenerate. I don't think it has anything to do with the Coomer mind state. Because there's a bunch of fucking OF chicks out there that go throw out shit all day. And nobody, and I watch when they look on Twitter, they essentially just like, go find your dad. Or go get a real job. They, they shit on these girls. So clearly that's not the common denominator. I think it's just like there's no alternative motive. It was just somebody out there having fun, making a funny uh, video and kind of tipsy. But that's why I think the Hot Two a blue girl blew up. I don't know how long it's going to last. I can't expect it to last that long. And like you will know, like most human beings, because people are mostly herd animals and followers, we will see a gangle of goose of other people copy exactly what she did and try to be something funny like that. And we'll all bring it to shit. Because once there's always original, there will always be mimickers and copycats. But anyway, appreciate you guys for listening. Hoping that got you guys understanding better why Hawk Tuna is famous. Which I'm still trying to work on a theory, but uh, it's confusing. America's confusing. The internet's confusing. God bless us all.